Hello everyone, this is Marty Runick from Top Gun PDR Training and I've been getting a lot of auto body and PDR techs contacting me lately wanting to know my opinion on different videos out there where they're using tension to fix light to moderate damage on sheet metal panels. So I thought I'd put together a quick video showing the top, oh I don't know, 8 to 10 mistakes that I'm seeing people making on a regular basis on these videos when tension is concerned. But before we go any further, I would like to clear up one misconception. I'm largely given credit for introducing tension and the Fairmont method to the PDR community. But I did not come up with this idea. I did not invent tension. This was done decades ago, actually in the 1920s and 30s, uh, by people who had introduced the Fairmont method. They're the ones that came up with this. They're the ones that deserve the credit. The only thing I've done was adapt it to PDR uh, make it a little more uh, user-friendly for the thinner metals that we're using today and the fact that we now have to save paint. That's all I've done and nothing more. I've also had some tech send me videos where uh, people are borrowing my content. I don't really have a problem with that. Glad it's getting out there, but uh, wouldn't do any harm to mention where you got it from. Kind of doubt that's going to happen though. And one more thing, I've been asked a lot lately if I'm still doing training. Yes, I am, both beginning and advanced. The advanced may be taking a turn as I may be doing some advanced seminars where we do live repairs while we're teaching people how to do these things. Um, we'll see how that works out, so stay tuned. And this video will be for both you PDR guys and you auto body guys, so uh, let's get at it. Uh, this is my personal pickup. It's a beater truck. I use it for hauling just about everything. Uh, I was picking up a load of compost and the loader did this to my truck. Now trying to repair this without the right tension equipment would be very difficult. A lot of body shops would yank that out as flat as they could and put a lot of mud in it. Uh, the actual impact point was not a point. It was a line about uh, 16 inches long actually. Stretched metal in just about every portion of it too. And to make matters much worse, this is the third time this vehicle has been hit in this area. The first one was a rear end hit, which I have a video on actually on my website. You can watch it if you want. The second one happened after my tire blew up and shredded the bottom section and damaged a little bit of the upper also. That's why the rubberized undercoating is there. Now, if this had been the first time this area had been hit and there wasn't paint damage on it already in the upper portion, this would have been doable by PDR. So we're going to get this as close as we can using tension to where we could do it with PDR if it hadn't been so badly damaged in the past. Now let's pull back and get a good look at that crown. It's about a 110 degree angle crown. Uh, going to be pretty stiff on metal that's just thick. Now of course the crown at the bottom isn't nearly as bad as the one on the top, but the fact that it's got a 16 inch long impact point is going to make it a really interesting job. Now, one of the reasons I picked this particular job to film is because it's such a good demonstration of what could go wrong if you didn't do all the basics right, because it has a lot of things going against it here. And it'll be the perfect job to demonstrate to a lot of you techs why you're having trouble with tension and why you think it doesn't work for you. And let's just do a quick aerial view here from the top. You can see the uh, length of that impact point. Give you a little different view on it. And we're also going to have to use a couple different types of tension on this damage, uh, not just your standard, uh, like you've seen people with the threaded rod. We're going to do some of that too, but we're definitely going to have to put a pretty decent pull on that rear end too, because it uh, tail light popped right out of the bottom there, obviously, and uh, the whole area just sucked in. So we will have to use two types of tension to move that rear end sheet metal back into place. Now, for you PDR and auto body techs who are using a system like, say, the Keco system, which, by the way, I'm a big fan of both that uh, glue pulling system and their tools. I think they're first class. Uh, they're made more for light end collision. What we're talking about here is entry level moderate collision. You're going to need steel pull tabs. You're going to need a much, much thicker rod than what you've seen. My rod, what I use on these is a three quarter inch rod. Uh, one of the main reasons I use that, you say, well, couldn't a uh, couldn't half-inch rod do it? No, it won't. It bends much too easily, and when a rod bends, you're losing strength, and you're changing the whole physics of how this thing uh, pulls, and we'll discuss that a little bit when we get into theory in a little bit later section in the video. 
Now, many times on a lighter duty dent, I will go to half inch rod just because it's lighter, a little bit easier to handle. But on something like this, you're going to need full three quarter inch rod to do it. But I have to say on the bulk of the stuff that I do, I really do prefer the three quarter inch rod because it takes much less tension. Uh, you would think it would be more, but it actually puts less tension, less pressure on the panel. Doesn't deform the outer area of the dent anywhere nearly as bad as what you can get sometimes with the thinner rods like the half inches. And for those of you that have watched some of my website videos, you know how much emphasis I put on getting free metal. Metal that you don't have to work, comes out for free. But if you do everything according to the Fairmont method, fellas, you get, you get your free metal, you get fast finish, and of course a happier customer. Okay, we're all set to put some tension on. We've got everything hooked up to our light to moderate duty pull post, and we're ready to go. We've already put a quick overall tension pull on this before we got to this point, and we'll explain that later on in the video. Now, if you're wondering how to do this in your shop, I've got a video on my uh, Top Gun PDR training site giving you the ins and outs of how to set up your shop to do pulls like this. It's very, very easy to do. Uh, nothing complicated about it. Now the very first thing we're doing is putting enough tension on that entire rear panel area to swing everything out to where it needs to be before we use those rods. It's very, very important to do it in that sequence. You don't want to put the rod tension on first on something like this and then put tension on the panel. You're not going to get that fast finish. You're not going to get as good a result. And later on in the video, we'll go into the specifics of why you want to do it this way. Now you notice the first thing we did after we got a sufficient amount of tension on that main body panel, we went for the top crown first, then bottom crown second. Most of the energy is stored in that top crown. Now it didn't react quite the way it would if we didn't have such a long impact point. That was like a 16 inch impact point, so we didn't get the uh, effect that you would normally get. But the first thing we did, we went for the top and the bottom crown, focusing on the top crown of course. Now you'll notice on the two middle tabs, we're not putting anywhere near the amount of pressure we did on the top one and not even as much as we did on the bottom one. Now, if we had put it in the center, we would have caused the panel to pop, but we would have trapped metal all over that panel and the surrounding area and vastly, vastly increased our finishing time. So remember guys, just like we say in the theory videos, get your crowns first the best you can. After that, Start stress relieving. A very common mistake, guys, is to go for that center area because you would get a lot of metal to, to pop out and it would make you feel real good. But like I say, you can't do that. You've got to resist the temptation to want to see metal move and you have to go for the fine finish. That's what we're all about here, at the fine finish. You want to get that finish as fast as possible. We don't care about moving metal at this stage. We're always concerned about getting that metal worked out in the proper sequence so that we have a fast finish. Now, of course, on a job like this where you've got three separate hits and a hugely long impact point, you're not going to get a fine finish quickly. You're not even going to get a fine finish. It's beyond that, but we're going to get it to the point where you put just a tiny bit of filler on it. So if this area had not been hit before and we were doing PDR on it, we would be doing everything the same way. Now we're heating that top crown up to about 180, 190, maybe 200 at the very, very most. We need to soften that crown up because it is kind of resisting us, which is totally to be expected from that long of an impact point. You want to make sure you really got your key gun calibrated when you're doing this, guys, and do not use a torch. Use a calibrated heat gun that you've calibrated to show you how to do that in one of the videos on my channel. But you've got to make sure that heat gun's calibrated. Torching will not do that here. We're just softening that middle up help it to move a little bit easier. Now we've already mentioned that one of the reasons we keep putting tension on it from the pull post is because we want to get the entire structure to move back because it was kind of folded in on itself. 
I want to get the entire structure to move back and one of the keys I'm using, visual keys, is between that second and third tab, that little buckle that was in the wheelhouse lip. Now most of that did disappear on an initial pull I put before I started filming. I'm watching it, haven't touched it yet, but it's almost gone. So I do not focus on one spot, I'm looking at the entire panel to give me cues as to what to do next. And once I'm convinced that that rear section is where it needs to be, I'm going to drop the pull post and focus only on the rods. Now fixing dents like this using both a pull post and glue pulling tabs to provide tension is a bit unconventional, but uh, I've got to tell you, I've been doing this for a long, long time and it, uh, it cuts down your finishing time like crazy. I mean, it also helps your metal to pop too, but like we keep saying, it really, really helps with your finishing time. Now, while there's tension on the panel, I am constantly looking over the entire panel to see what's going on. And I'm paying particular attention to where those glue plates are. Because as you're putting tension on those, if you see any deformations starting to happen, like a little depression right next to the tab, you need to stop immediately. I'm also checking my crown to make sure it's constantly moving while I'm putting pressure on and just over the edges of the panel. So in other words, guys, don't focus on the impact area. Yes, you want to look at it, but be looking at the entire panel while you're doing this. You also want to be checking out the edges of your panel on something like this, the wheelhouse and even the rear. There's all kinds of places where tension can manifest itself. So if you see any newly formed buckles happening or some buckles getting worse, stop immediately. You know, this is a demonstration that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I purposely put the wrong rod in these top glue plates here where the crown is. This is half inch rod. It should be three quarters like the others at the bottom. Look at the bend in that rod, guys, in that half inch rod. That is not good. It's creating a number of problems for us, which we are going to discuss later on when we go into more of the theory in this video. Now, many people will tell you, you know, you kind of want that bow on that rod because that helps to keep spring tension on it. Guys, that is true in small dance and not even always true then, but in something like this, no way is that true. On a couple of minutes, we'll show you how that three-quarter inch rod looks in comparison to the half inch. I think you'll be very impressed. Okay, now we've got the half inch, we got three-quarter inch bar on. And let's see what that does. Not going to be any bending in this one. And by the way, guys, if you are heating too close to a metal glue tab, you should put a rag or wet rag around it or something because if you're too close, that can heat up the glue and start a premature uh, fly off of your tab, and you don't want that. On this particular type of hit, uh, we have a very long impact point, and you got a crown right above it. You're not going to see much of a difference, even if you do everything right. There's not going to be as much of a difference as there would be in a dent that, say, we just caused by a single impact point or a, or a smaller area. This is one of the toughest dents to do when you've got that long of an impact point. You just don't see a lot of stuff going on. So you yeah, just got to be patient, work with it, and it'll come. Also keep in mind that a crown that is formed from such a long stretched impact area is not going to come out nearly as easy as a standard crown. Well I'm surprised that tab lasted that long on that rubberized coating. It actually did better than I thought it would but it finally came off. Did scuff that rubberized area with some denatured alcohol and scotch bright pads so I'm sure it helped a little bit. All right, well, it may not look this way from the camera, but right there, that took quite a bit of the uh, sharpness of that crown out. And last twist with a wrench. All right, all we're doing now is using a wooden slapper and giving a little stress relief on that crown. Uh, metal works just fine, but uh, trying to do this as simple as possible and let you guys know that you don't need the super fancy equipment to do really nice work. Wooden paint stir stick with some Gorilla Tape on the bottom does just fine. All right, even though we have about twice the amount of pressure on that three-quarter inch rod as we did on the half inch, you can see there's hardly any bend on that three-quarter inch rod at all. 
and again we'll discuss why that's so important in the theory part of the video coming up well i apologize for having my iphone camera pointed at the floor while i was glue pulling but came out a really nice slide hammer nothing super fancy uh the tension definitely helped but it still will leave the uh, stretch all that stretch metal there glue pulling will never handle stretch metal but it raised a lot of that metal up nice and level especially with that crown work done and of course you always leave the tension on those rods while you're doing your glue pulling all right this is what's left after i reattached that one lower glue plate that pulled off did a quick pull on it and gotten back of there with a portal power with my rubber body line attachment and uh with tension on it of course and came right out and here's what i used to push out that lower body line with tension still on it of course the rubber porter power boot just shave that with a grinder works fantastic took almost no pressure to bring out the body line all right now you see those two dents that are left if you look close you can see two dark lines kind of in the middle of them that's where your stretched metal is and there's really no point in going any further until I've addressed that issue. And since that area is all boxed in except through the bottom, I'll be using a power box to shrink those spots up. And there is enough room in there for me to get my hand in there with a 40 grit block and just scratch things up really well so I can get electrical contact. And we're not going to film that because you can't see anything with a power box. All the action happens from the back. Well, we put about 10 minutes worth of power box work into it, but there's that one spot that just was not going to shrink up with that, so we had to result to the uh, old tried and true heat shrink. We only put a spot probably about as big as the, uh, the pencil eraser as far as the actual heat spot went, probably no bigger than the pencil eraser. I used an oxyacetylene torch with a small tip, of course, and it did kind of surprise me having to put a heat shrink this far down from where the crown was because I did expect if I was going to have to heat shrink it'd be right underneath that crown but uh, it's not the way it worked out. And for you metal finishers I generally quench a heat shrink spot with ice water versus regular water. It gives you a noticeably tighter shrink. Well since we had to heat shrink anyway we're going to grind a little bit further high and to the left and we're going to put a very thin film of filler in that and we'll be good to go. It'll be ready to paint. One more thing I did do after I used the power box, we put this bag set up with a block in between the skin and the inner structure and kind of use it as a flexible dolly to even things out a little bit with the finishing hammer. All right, let's take a quick look at our Rust-Oleum Gloss Industrial White. Now, before any of you start getting into the comment section saying, what a hack, he's using Rust-Oleum on his vehicles, what a hillbilly. Guys, the reason I'm doing that is, again, this is a work truck, it's a beater, it's been in, uh, <laughs> every panel's been damaged one way or another. And going back and forth to the body shop, getting California quality paint is just not an option. Plus, honestly, I found over the probably a 10-year period, the Rust-Oleum outlasts factory for sure and uh, the body shop paint that we have in California. And fortunately, there's not a huge amount of blending needed because it's a pretty close match to factory. Okay, back in the shop. Just want to get a little different view of it. Still haven't buffed it yet. And we only needed a small skim coat of filler about where that heat shrink was up to about the top of that crown, maybe not even an inch and a half wide. Estimated repair time, not including filler and paint, right about an hour and a half. And that's because we got a lot of free metal. If this had been the first time it had been hit, I'd have gone with paintless dent repair and did some brush touching. Estimated time on that, about six, seven hours, maybe a bit more. And I would have used some slightly different techniques and tools if we had gone PDR. But we're not done yet. we got theory to go over, and that's where the money is. So make sure you stay for the end of the video because we got a lot of money-making info and some other surprises. All right, guys, we are going to demonstrate the importance of the distance off the panel as far as your tension rods are concerned. And you can try this at home if you want. We're going to pretend that these blocks of wood are tabs that you've glued to your panel and that my fingers are tension rods. I'm going to push horizontally with the panel as best as we can. I'm going like this, straight up like that. I'm not doing this, straight like that. 
as soon as I do anything at all, push. It immediately wants to deform the entire area where the wire dent is there. All right, and it's gonna put lows in this area and a high where your dent is. You may think that's what you want, by the way, but it isn't. Now, if we go down to the middle of the tab, and we do, again, just do this only, gotta push a lot harder, but it still wants to deform, it still wants to pull up from the panel, okay? Not nearly as much as it was from here, of course, but it still does. Now, of course, if this were sheet metal, it wouldn't be moving like this at all, but the paper does illustrate what's happening to the sheet metal. To the skin, to the sheet metal, and just a tiny bit up so that our fingertips aren't touching the paper, okay, so very, very close to the bottom. And now watch this. Again, pulling, we're going to push straight across. Put as hard as I can, and barely nothing's happening just can't get that tension rod as close to your panel as you can with a plate versus a tab or blocks of wood or anything else people use. Those pull plates you saw in the video or design that I've had for a very long time, they will actually push center of pressure 3 16 off the panel. I'm not aware of anyone else using 3 quarter inch rod that has gotten center of pressure that low off the panel. Now on light damage, the fact that it does tend to pull the dent up can be an advantage, but only on light damage. You would never try that on anything moderate. All right, now this is half inch rod. Uh, three eighths would be far, far worse than this. It would bend far too much, but the half inch is also bending too much. Now I'm sure many of you have been told that that's actually a good thing. The only time that's a good thing is in your lighter collision work. And the reason for that is when that light rod bends, it tends to pick up the edges of your dent. But on moderate collision damage, you'll have to use so much force that that rod's going to bend so much that it will tend to buckle the outside of your dent where your tabs are. Also, on anything more than a lighter hit, those rods bending like that are going to use up a whole lot of force that could be going into your dent because of that bowing takes a lot of energy to build a rod like that. You may also have heard that the rod bending like that will act as a spring. So as you're taking the dent out, it'll help you to remove the dent. That's true on really light stuff, not on moderate stuff, guys. Now this part of the video, you can see we switched to the three quarter inch rod and put a whole lot more tension on it than we did have on the half inch. And you can see very, very little bowing. This is exactly what you need on this type of dent. A rod that bows as bad as that half inch rod did is never going to remove any kind of significant damage. Now because that thicker rod is exerting so much tension force, you do have to be aware of the outside of your pull plates. Once in a while they will tend to form a buckle and as soon as that happens, you've got too much pressure on back off a bit and start lifting up the damage with your glue pulling or whatever other method you use. Now I bought up the damage in that upper area with glue pulling and again I apologize for losing the footage. I had my camera pointed at the floor. But I, got, I think I went back about three separate times between the tension and the glue pulling while I was doing this because it was just starting to form a little bit of a buckle at the top plate there. So you don't want to do that. And that's why you're constantly monitoring your entire repair area while you're doing this. You want to catch any problems as soon as you see them. Now I did get very close to adding some tension from my pull post as I was trying to get this top tension rod to get the uh, that crown out the way I wanted it to. Uh, didn't quite have to, but I came close. And that's why I left that pull post connected during the entire repair because of every once in a while you misjudged it and you realize that, hey, I got to have some help from my pull post. And using tension rods with a pull post really just open up a whole new world for you. Okay, this is how we blocked on this vehicle. This is the right side truck bed wheelhouse toward the front. And we've got a clamp there and we blocked with our porter power. It's the only thing I could get in there. I couldn't use a floor jack because the leaf spring was in the way. 
So this is what we're doing, and uh, this will be just fine. This clamp is more than stout enough to handle it. Now we're going to be chaining to that hook right there. And of course our portal power is going to provide us with more than enough blocking force to do this. Now unfortunately what a lot of auto body and PDR techs would do would be just to tie a chain around the front end bumper hook and start pulling. You don't want to do that because if you do do that you're going to make the entire vehicle settle down. It's going to compress on the spring and you're going to need a lot more tension to do the same amount of work you could do if you had just blocked correctly. Now the other problem with using a front bumper hook to anchor is that you've got all kinds of stuff absorbing energy between that point and where you're pulling. You've got rubber mounting donuts and all kinds of other stuff including distance that's separating you between your anchoring point, you know where you're pulling from, and where you're chained. Generally speaking you want your anchor point to be as close to where you're pulling as practical. Also notice that I did not use one of those holes in the frame right next to where the portal power is. That would have been easier. No, I want to pull sheet metal to sheet metal and that inner wheelhouse that is directly connected to that bedside and the other sheet metal. And you got to realize that all these things that we're doing is going to enable us to use less tension on a repair, which means we're going to get a faster finish. So even something seemingly unrelated as this, guys, directly applies to how fast you can finish because the less tension you use in general, the faster finish you're going to get. Now for unibody vehicles, the preferred method of tying down and clamping is going to be right at your rocker. That's a very, very heavy part of the vehicle. Uh, very, very stable, but you had better block these because this is going to make even more difference on wasting the energy that we just got done talking about. Very, very critical. You have to block unibody vehicles. I generally do this by putting a jack underneath the rear control point, lifting it up about two to three inches, putting the appropriate size block of wood in there, and raise it down gently right on the rocker, and we're good to go. Now you wouldn't want to block so high that after you took your jack away, the wheel wouldn't touch the ground. That's way, way too high. You just want to keep the vehicle from settling as you're pulling. All right, the first thing I wanted to go over with you fellas was the use of overall tension. And this is something that you really don't see auto body guys do anymore, and certainly not PDR guys. But uh, anyone familiar with a Fairmont method knows this is a primary tool if you're going to get a fast, efficient repair plan. All right, fellas, I want to show you one last thing here. Uh, we talked about it initially. We had that uh, triple tab there. Where we pulled just tension only. We had a threaded rod all ready to go, but we hadn't used them yet. We put our tension on there, all right? And as we put our tension on there, the reason we did that, we wanted this entire area to swing back just a little bit, all right? And see, well, how could that happen from a direct hit like that? Why would this entire area go in? Well, it does, fellas, it's fairly common. Uh, just a 16th or an eighth of an inch is more than enough to give us, totally screw us up with that fast finish. So what we did, Initial tension there, and even though this didn't change much with that initial tension, we brought everything back, and one of the keys we talked about was that buckle that was right there, and uh, like I said, I did not film that part of which it had. Uh, as soon as we put that tension in there, <coughs> I could see that buckle start to loosen right up. All right, fellas, and those of you that use tension rods would probably say, you know what, I'm going to put tension rods from the crown all the way to the bottom. I'm just going to use my tension rods and get all that worked out, and I'll be good to go. No, you won't, fellas. You're thinking, yeah, but the damage is right there in the middle. I mean, perfect job for a tension rod. Nope. And the reason for that is, fellas, is when that got hit in the middle, and I know this is a little bit tough to conceptualize, but stay with me, that entire area from where the taillight is to the beginning of the wheelhouse made just a little bit of a jag in, maybe a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch. Now, it's true it got caved in, and it brought the wheelhouse and the taillight area together, that is true. But it also, that initial hit, also took that entire area and moved it toward the wheelhouse just a little bit. Now you may be thinking, even if that's true, so what? Well guys, it, it is a big deal because if you leave that entire section kind of collapsed on itself toward the wheelhouse, even if you put your tensioning rod in, 
and get all that impact point, that 16 inch impact point out, you're going to definitely screw up your finishing time because that entire section being in just a little bit is going to wreak havoc with you when you're starting to push on those little tiny spots that are left, even though you may have pushed out the majority of that dent. Now, if you're an auto body tech and you say, so what, I'm going to put filler in it anyway, all right. But if you're a PDR tech, just that one thing can make the difference between a fast finish and staying there for hours, trying to pick out damage that keeps moving on you. Now, part of the damage that made me suspect that the entire area was shoved slightly into the wheel was this buckle. Another was the top of the crown. If you'll notice, that crown angles almost toward that buckle, which in and of itself might not be anything, but that crown takes a very long slope. That's exactly what happens when an entire area is shoved toward the wheel. Now, you might be thinking, come on, how can I possibly remember all this? Well, that's why we put tension only, okay, tension only, not from your tension rods, tension only on initially because it helps us to diagnose what's going on. We put that tension on while we're watching the whole panel, watch what disappears. Well, guess what? That crown definitely softened up in that area immediately, not the crown toward the taillight, the one toward the wheelhouse, and that buckle softened up immediately. And that buckle in the wheelhouse disappeared almost completely with most of the damage still in the panel. So that told you that happened from that entire area being shoved into the tire and not from that long impact area. What if there wasn't a buckle there? Would you still have done it? I would have on something like this because just because it's hit like that and everything goes like that doesn't mean this entire section didn't have to come back just a tiny little bit. And the reason I'm being that picky about it, again, I want a fast finish. Now, using these techniques enabled me to put only filler between that heat shrink spot that you saw and the top of where those crowns were in about a two inch wide swath, that's it. And maybe a little bit of filler on the body line. That was it. The rest of it was all free metal. So guys, by now I'm pretty sure I'm coming off as a one note banjo, but I really am trying to enforce this point that if you're gonna take on this really large stuff, you have to get the basics down. And this is one of them putting a preliminary tension on a panel while you watch how the panel responds to it will definitely give you information that's going to help you with your fine finishing. And remember, anybody can move metal. Do that in a second with your foot from the back of the panel. But fine finishing, guys, that's what destroys us time-wise. And also, fellas, don't forget to watch those two large dent theory videos I've got on my website. And watch them over and over again until it becomes second nature to you. And if you do every large dent, go back on those videos, find out what you missed, and you'll know how to apply it next time. For well over a year now, I've had a lot of auto body and PDR techs especially ask me, why aren't you putting out more videos? There's nothing like them anywhere. You can always learn so much from them. Well, I always ask them, are you spreading the word about the videos? And they go, well, they go silent or say, I don't want my competition to find out about them. And I understand that, but you've all noticed the uh, <laughs> very quick decline in the skill level of both sheet metal guys, auto body guys, and PDR techs out there. I'm seeing stuff that I've never seen before. It's just getting completely ridiculous and seems like it's only getting worse. And that was the main reason I started putting these videos out a few years ago, trying to get the skill level of your basic sheet metal guy and PDR guy up to where it needs to be. I do love teaching. It's my favorite thing to do. Always has been. So I've pretty much come to a decision. I'm going to ask again if you techs that are watching these videos and getting so much from them, if you'll please spread the word to the people that you know and tell them about this channel and ask them if they've subscribed. If you don't want to do that, that's okay. It's your decision. But unless we get a lot more subscribers to this channel, uh, there really is no incentive for me to keep putting these videos out. And what I will probably do is start doing what a lot of other people are doing, and that's doing seminars. I've had texts from different parts of the country wanting me to come in and do uh, large and complex dent repair seminars while doing demonstrations on damaged vehicles. They set up the shop and everything for me. Of course, I'm going to charge... A lot of money for that, uh, as everyone else is, but it'll be well worth it. Um, 
but I have no problem keeping this on a free level if tech starts sharing the videos on this channel with others and the subscribers increase by a lot. So please spread the word about these videos. All right, these are the pull plates that I use and the system I use. I've uh, never seen anybody come up with anything better yet. If somebody has, I'd love to see what you've got. I do have other systems I've designed that work great, but I use this system quite a bit. Each individual plate is thin enough to be bent fairly easily. Uh, and you do want those plates to lay flat with the panels, so all panels are curved, which means these plates have to be curved too. You don't want to put a flat plate on a curved panel. You're not going to get much tension that way because your plates will be coming off your panel too easily. On tension pulls, it's also important to heat your tabs and your panels up like we talk about in one of those instructional videos on my website. That will give you much more available tension. This is high strength stainless steel three quarter rod. This is your receiver end and your driver end. And the hook goes into the loop on your plates. But one of the best things about this system is you can use three quarter inch rod and still keep your center of pressure about three sixteenths off the panel. I don't know of anyone else doing any better than that with a heavy duty tensioning system. But if you are, let me know. And if you think that's being just a bit picky, well, remember that demonstration with the wooden blocks? Same thing happens in real life, guys. Just a sixteenth, eighth of an inch can make a noticeable difference in how much more tension you can put on without deforming the panel underneath those tabs. Before we finish up, I would like to put something out there. If you are a classically trained Fairmont tech, I would love to get in contact with you. I have been talking about this before, but nobody has ever responded. So, uh, hoping I'm not the last one out there. But if you're out there, I have an offer to make that I don't think you'll be able to refuse. So, uh, please give me a call. All right, this is for you PDR techs. If you want to be doing large dent repair, the best advice I can give you is think like a sheet metal collision tech. Do not think like a painless dent repair tech. Uh, the picking up your lows, tapping down your highs is not going to make it here, very obviously. You've got to think like a collision tech. So you are not a large dent PDR tech. You are a collision tech who is also saving the paint. Now we mentioned the Fairmont method quite a bit during this video. And uh, just a personal note here, uh, I've been doing this now for over 50 years, just over 50 years, and I have yet to meet a world-class sheet metal collision tech, uh, somebody that I would consider world-class anyway, who hasn't been trained or wasn't trained in the Fairmont method. And for right now, the best way to learn how to do collision repair according to the Fairmont method is to watch the videos I've got on my website. There's two theory videos that are worth their weight in gold. You watch those over and over and over again. Apply them to your work. And every time you do a job, watch those videos over. And I'm guaranteeing you, you're going to go, I forgot this. I forgot that. Do that for a couple of months. And you're going to be shocked at how fast and how efficient and how clean you're getting. The videos are free. All the videos are free on my website. You got nothing to lose. So whether you're a PDR tech or an auto body tech, if you want to learn the Fairmont method to collision repair, you can get a good start at it now. I'll put a link to those two videos I mentioned in the description below. But it would also be a good idea to watch all the videos I've got on my website. There's some really good information there that will help you get to where you want to be. And as always, if you like the video, if you think you learned something, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. And as we talked about earlier, if you want to see more videos, start spreading the word. Tell all the techs you know, and let's try to improve this trade.